In this video, we will show you how to publish individual remote apps or RDP applications. Uh, previously, we already have published a full desktop. So uh, if you want to publish like individual applications to specific users, that's of course also possible in Awingu. And you can also mix them. So you could, for example, publish some desktops, publish some remote apps. Everything can be mixed uh, together. Uh, before I'm going to show you how uh, this works and what you need to do, it's important to validate a few of the settings on your Windows backend. So for the remote apps and the RDP apps to, to work uh, as, as expected, there are some GPOs which are required. If you go to the uh, Awingu admin guide and you go to the chapter on uh, GPOs, you will see that there are a few GPOs which are uh, mentioned. Um, the first one, it, I think that's the most uh, important one. By default, um, Microsoft only allows one RDP connection per user. So even if you have installed um, Microsoft Terminal Server, you can only connect with one user at one time at the same uh, at the same moment. So if you connect a second time, it will it will not work. It will tell you that there is already a connection open. So it's important that uh, if you want to have like multiple applications open or um, uh, share different uh, different settings that um, this, this setting is, uh, is set to disabled. So if you go to your uh, administrative templates in, in your GPOs and then to the remote desktop session host configuration, please make sure that uh, this GPO restrict remote desktop services to a single service session is set to disabled so that it's allowed to connect uh, multiple times. Um, this is no problem, for example, for things like user profile disks or FS logic profiles where, where you can only have like one profile. I'm going to show you later on where you could, uh, where you could fix that, but it's important that it's set to, uh, to disabled. Another thing which is, uh, which is uh, mandatory, especially if you want to use RDP applications, that's um, the, the GPO which says allow remote start of unlisted program. So uh, as long as that GPO is not set to enabled, you will only be able to use remote apps and not RDP apps. What's the difference between the two? Uh, remote apps is it's uh, it's an extension of the RDP protocol in which you need to publish on your uh, kernel server uh, the the apps the individual apps you would like to make available. So uh, if I go back to my uh, full desktop from before and I go to my uh, my collection, you see I have already published a, a few uh, remote apps uh, in here. So Awingu is also able to start those uh, those remote apps without uh, without any problem. Um, RDP uh, applications, that's uh, something in between a full desktop and a remote app. Basically, it starts a full desktop, but instead, instead of starting the Explorer shell, it starts the individual application. So it's also one application which, which is going to be uh, visible, but uh, we don't have the concept of the, of the remote app extension. Uh, and as such, we, we cannot do things like putting multiple applications on top of each other. So it will be like one application in an RDP uh, an RDP stream. So that's the difference between remote apps. That's uh, just taking over the remote apps of, uh, of, uh, of Microsoft. We can put several apps together in the same stream. That's, uh, that's no problem. RDP applications, it's, uh, it's um, a full RDP stream, but with an alternative shell being the application we have uh, specified. Uh, also, going back to the GPOs, it's important that uh, you also configure the, the timeout uh, correct. So by default, Awingo will keep the sessions open for as long as it's needed. Uh, once that Awingo closes the sessions, they also need to be closed on the on the Windows backend. If you don't do that, those sessions will remain open and they will never be uh, be cleaned up. So there are two timeouts which need to be set. One is the the timeout for disconnected sessions, which is one minute. That's the the minimum. And then once the session has been uh, has been um, uh, logged off, uh, to do that uh, immediately. Uh, so those are the, the the GPOs which are which are needed on the on the backend side. So now going back to the uh, to the Awingu side, if I would like to add a remote uh, a remote app in uh, in Awingu, I have to go back to my system settings, manage uh, applications. This time, if I click on add, I'm going for the the remote application. So I could, for example, publish uh, uh, MS Paint, uh, Microsoft Paint. I'm going to choose an icon uh, for Microsoft Paint. So uh, there is my Paint icon, uh, for example, uh, over here. Um, then um, Awingu is asking me for the alias. So the alias is the alias under which the application has been published on the Microsoft site. So if I go back to my uh, um, collection, uh, you will see that uh, the Paint application is actually uh, published under MS Paint. So the alias is the second column. So uh, this is what we need to specify uh, in Awingu. So the alias is MS uh, Paint. Then again, similar like with the uh, 
full desktops. Avingu asks who can see this application. So for example, going to make paint available for uh, everyone. Um, not going to specify any context for the moment. And then Awingu asks again on which system I can connect. So again, for example, say I would like to connect to system uh, zero. But in my case, I have two terminal servers with the same app published. So I could, for example, also specify that it runs on app zero and on app one. And Awingu will choose any of those two uh, application servers. So Awingu will do automatic uh, load balancing. Uh, there is a separate video on, on how to do that with an RDS broker, but in this case, it's the Awingu load balancing that will uh, take care of it. Um, then, uh, as this is a, a published application, we can associate uh, file types with it. So I could, for example, say I can use Paint to open uh, GIF files, uh, GP, JPG, uh, and so on and so on. So I can associate several uh, file types with, uh, with uh, this uh, application. Um, Important to know is that if you're associating file types with an application, on the moment you click later on in the files on a, on a, on a, on a JPEG image, Awingu will know it can open that with, uh, with Paint, and it will pass the location of the file as a parameter to the application itself. So by default, uh, Microsoft doesn't allow you to pass any parameters to a published remote application. So it's important that if you, if you have those kinds of applications that on the, on the Windows side, uh, and you, you go to parameters, that you make sure that this flag is set, so allow any command line parameters. If this is not set, uh, Awingu will open Paint, but your, it will not open the image itself. So if you want to make sure that if you click on, an app, on a file, Awingu opens Paint and it shows you directly the, the file, please make sure that, uh, that this command line uh, parameter has been set on your, uh, on your uh, application. So this is, uh, this is uh, step one. Um, you will see that under advanced settings, there are a few options we can, uh, we can specify. Uh, we could, for example, change the color depth. So by default, we're using 16-bit uh, color. Um, we have customers, for example, in the medical space. Uh, for some of those applications, 16-bit colors is not sufficient. You can put that on 32-bit uh, colors. That's no problem. Just take into account if you go from 16-bit to 32-bit color that you will need double the uh, bandwidth uh, for the application. So 16-bit uh, is in most cases sufficient, but you can uh, go to 30-bit uh, or 24-bit uh, or if that would be uh, required. Uh, one of the things I want to show you here under advanced is session merge. So uh, as I said before, um, if you have uh, uh, set the GPO, uh, allow multiple sessions per user, uh, and now Wingo can uh, a user can log in multiple times. For example, for user profile disks, that, that could be a problem. So there is a session, a setting in Awingu where Awingu will reuse existing RDP sessions if that is possible. So to avoid that a profile needs to be opened twice or a profile needs to be uh, linked twice. So it will speed up the login, but it will also solve, for example, some, uh, some issues with, uh, with things like user profile disks that uh, might uh, occur. So if I click on add, I have my uh, Microsoft Paint uh, application uh, added. Uh, the other thing, as said before, eh, we can also publish RDP applications. Eh? RDP as applications is something in between a full desktop and a remote app. For RDP applications, it's a bit the same thing. So let me use the, the calculator for, uh, for that as example. So um, name calculator uh, icon. I'm going to pick a calculator icon. And then Awingu is not asking for the uh, alias, but it's asking for the comment, uh, uh, the, the, the command itself. So uh, in my case, say Windows System 32, uh, Win32 calc.exe. Uh, Again, this will only work if you have set the GPO uh, allow execution of uh, unlisted programs. If that GPO is not set, there will be a, an error uh, later on. For the rest, everything is the same. So again, I can specify who can see this application. So for example, everyone on which system does it run? It runs, for example, both on my app server one and on my app server uh, two. I can associate file types with it if that would be uh, needed. The only thing which is, of course, not possible, you will see that uh, there is no session merge uh, possible for the very simple reason that it's a full desktop uh, and, and we cannot uh, overlay uh, screens on top of, uh, of each other. So this is the big difference between remote apps and RDP apps. Uh, um, with our remote apps, we can put things, uh, things again together with uh, RDP apps. That's not uh, possible. If I click on Add, um, you will see that I have both my, uh, my uh, MS Paint and my uh, calculator uh, available. Um, in general, we would recommend to use as much as possible remote apps. The only reason to go to RDP apps is uh, if your application is not compatible with, with remote app protocol. This happens not that often, but that happens sometimes with very old applications or uh, applications that have been developed in-house. 
uh, then you can still use that uh, RDP application as a, as a fallback. But in general, we would uh, recommend to use uh, remote apps. Uh, let's check if that works. So if I uh, log out and log back in with my user, I should see both my uh, Microsoft Paint and my um, calculator application. If I click on the um, calculator application, it will start um, an RDP app and it will open the, the calculator, as you can, uh, can see. Uh, if I go to the um, uh, Paint application, something similar will happen, but it will use uh, the remote app uh, protocol. So uh, as you can see, both are available. Um, so in this video, I've shown you that next to desktops, we can also publish uh, remote apps and uh, RDP applications. Uh, in the next video, we will uh, start adding um, network drives.